Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Dan Armendaris, a TF for Computer Science E1. You're watching one of our videos of the week. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about creating a boot disk. I have a question for you first. Do you have a backup of the data on your hard drive? If something happens to your Windows installation, such that you can't boot into Windows anymore, would you be able to recover that data? Your tax documents, those family photos, all that stuff that's really important to you, would you be able to save it? Would you be able to get it back? Well, hopefully you do. But if you don't, there are a few things you can do in the case of an emergency to be able to try to recover some of the data. It's not always successful, depending on the type of failure, but sometimes you can recover some things. So back in the day, we created what were called boot disks. These were put on floppy disks where you would insert them into your computer and it would boot into another operating system so that you could access the hard drive on your machine and try to copy some files over onto another disk, for example. This was useful if you couldn't boot into your Windows installation that was on your hard drive. Now, though, things have gotten a bit more modern. We can put them on CDs, and in the case of uh, Macintosh computers, you can even use external hard drives and boot from even another computer. So, where do we start? Let's start first, perhaps, with a system called Nopix. What I have here on my screen is a website for Nopix. Now, Nopix is a form of Linux, but don't let this scare you. It's actually somewhat easy to use. Now, it exists in what's called a live CD. What you do is you download the CD, you burn it onto a physical disk, and when you restart your computer with this disk in it, it boots into Nopix. You don't have to install anything, you don't have to do anything, just burn the CD and restart into it. Now, this is nice because I have a screenshot of Nopix here, it actually looks somewhat like Windows. You can see that there's hard drives here on the left side. There are some applications and options along the bottom in what appears to be similar to a taskbar. So what you can do with this Nopix CD, if you're unable to boot into Windows and you need to try to recover some of your data, is download Nopix, maybe on a friend's computer, boot into it, and try to recover some of this data. You can copy it to an external hard drive, a USB thumb drive, whatever sort of data mechanism you can. Um, there are other options as well, but Nopix is actually fairly popular and it's pretty easy to use. Uh, you can go to nopix.com, as shown here, uh, and download the CD. The link is down here. Click on download, and you basically just have to find one where you can download it. So, right there, for example. Now, let's say you weren't using somewhat of a modern computer and you needed to actually create a boot disk. Well, we have a solution for that too. Go to bootdisk.com and they have boot disks for all sorts of operating systems. DOS, Windows 95, 98, Windows ME, Windows NT, Windows 2000, and even some boot disks for Windows XP. Click on the boot disks link and it brings you to a page where you can download and create boot disks for whichever operating system you have. Now, if you're on a Macintosh, all is not lost. One of the great things about the Macintosh is that you can actually copy over everything on your hard drive onto an external drive, and you can take this external drive around with you. Then, you can plug it into another Mac somewhere else and boot off of that copy. So, what does this mean for you? Well, this means that you can make an exact replica of everything on your hard drive the way it is right now, and boot into it at a later time. Maybe your hard drive dies, for example, you need to copy everything back. One of the best ways to do this is with a free application called Carbon Copy Cloner. Uh, the website up here is www.bombitch.com slash software slash cc.html. Just download the latest version, and if you have a Firewire hard drive, you can copy everything, the entire contents of your hard drive, over to it. Now the next time you restart your Mac, you can test this backup. If you hold down the Option key on Startup, 
it will show you all of the various options that you can boot from. It'll show you your, your internal hard drive, it'll show you a Firewire hard drive, it'll show you a bootable CD, for example, if you have one in your computer. You can select the appropriate one and test it. So I've given you a number of options where if you don't have a backup and something happens to either the hardware in your computer or to the installation of your operating system, we can try to recover some data. Now I still recommend a backup because you don't really want to leave things to chance. Not everything will work at all times. So the lesson here, backup. Well, this has been a video of the week. Thank you for watching. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about creating a boot disk. So I have a question for you first. Do you have a backup of your data? If a meteor came and destroyed your hard drive right now, would you be able to recover that data? Why a meteor? Why did I see a meteor? <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Just do it. Run with it. Run with I can't it. run with it. it. I lose my point. It's like, we'll create a boot disk and the meteor will disappear. <laughs>